So hi, I'm Daniel Treat. I'm an assistant professor in LTI. And um, the work that I want to talk about is about making it easier for people to use language interfaces by reasoning about the, the context that they use language in. So I'm interested in how we can make it easier for people to collaborate with computers to carry out real world tasks uh, mediated by language. So for example, if you want to navigate around in a complex environment conditioned on guidance from a person, um, we'll need to ground language. We'll need to figure out what things and actions um, the language is referring to. I'm also interested in interaction. So, um, you know, this will require tying language to the intents that people have when they produce it and also, you know, the effects that language would have on people. So if you say my neck hurts to your smartwatch, this isn't just a statement about your neck. It's also an indirect request for help. And a, you know, a system might reason about why a person said what they did to figure out that they were implicitly asking. So pragmatics is the field of linguistics that lets us tie language to intents and interpretations like this. So here's an example of both grounding and pragmatics. So grounding is kind of about the literal meaning of language in the world. If someone says to you, stop at the second car, you should figure out that they're probably referring to this car here. But if someone says stop at the car, there's a bunch of cars here. How do you figure out which one they had in mind? Most people would choose this car here. And one way you can derive this is by reasoning about alternatives. You know, the person who gave you this instruction had some car in mind. And um, since they chose stop the car rather than something more specific, like stop at the second car, they probably meant this one here. So. A lot of my work has modeled the pragmatics of language by um, uh, modeling language as a game between speakers and listeners, both for generation and interpretation. So if we're generating language, um, a speaker has some goal in, in the world that they're trying to get across to a listener, and they choose between things that they could say. And they'll hand that off to a listener, and then the listener is going to choose how to respond, and both agents you know, get utility in the game if the listener gets it right. So if the listener is kind of a simple one and we say stop at the car, we don't know which, um, which goal the listener is likely to choose. But if we're more specific, then the listener has a higher chance of getting it right. And that's what a speaker that reasons about the listener might choose. You can also use reasoning for the interpretation task. If a listener gets this less clear instruction like stop at the car, the listener could reason about the speaker, reasoning about the listener and figure the speaker had some goal in mind and they chose between things that they could say to try to get us there. Since they said stop at the car rather than something more specific, they probably meant this car here. So we've shown that this kind of reasoning procedure can improve people's ability to interact with systems across a range of tasks. One that I wanna talk about really quickly is vision and language navigation, where you have instructions that describe routes through um, scans of indoor buildings with instructions like take a right at the table that we just saw, then go left at this painting and take your first right, wait next to the exercise equipment. And we've looked at both generating and carrying out instructions in this setting. To do this, we'll train models to model people's um, behavior, um, both for generating instructions. We'll train a speaker model that produces distributions over instructions conditioned on these routes through the visual context, and listener models too, which perform the inverse task, um, distributions over actions conditioned on instructions and the environment. And once we have these neural models trained, we'll use them as components in the reasoning procedure that I sketched out a couple of slides ago. To generate instructions, we'll consider different ones and um, simulate how they might make a human listener modeled by our listener model um, carry out what the instruction we give and see if it has the effect that we wanted. We find that um, combining a speaker and a listener model together substantially improves people's ability to carry out instructions accurately over um, past state-of-the-art speaker models. And similarly for interpretation, um, if we combine a speaker and a listener model together, we get substantial improvements in our ability to carry out instructions from people when compared to past state-of-the-art listener models on their own. These days I'm thinking a lot about interaction where you have you know, multi-turn going back and forth between a person and a system. So for example, if a person's interacting with a flight booking system, it says, show me flights to JFK, the system can come back with some set of options and um, the person will pick one out. Um, but 
um, they really have you know, some underlying preferences that affect which flights they like. And they're identifying one flight here, this jet blue flight, but really um, we want to figure out what are their preferences that would affect what flights they'd like in other settings too. And more than just the option they choose, the way that they refer to that option gives us information about that. So since they didn't say I'd like the expensive flight, we can figure that you know, this carrier is possibly a more important feature to them and um, you know, update our posterior over their preferences based on what they said and then use that to um, act on behalf of the person um, uh, in better ways in other settings, um, giving things that are more relevant to them and what they're interested in. One setting that I'm trying to apply a lot of these settings now is a lot of these methods now is um, interactive code generation. So in collaboration with, um, with folks at Meta and Fair, we've um, built this generative model of code files, which uh, you know, have both um, code and comments. And we're working on ways that we can make it easier for people to interactively generate code using these models. Um, so the person can choose a region in the code file that they want the model to suggest some code at, and then kind of interactively edit the code alongside the model. And we can you know, model why did the person choose to interact with the, the model and the code in the way that they did? Like, why did they choose to write a comment versus make an edit versus supervise with test cases? So that kind of sums it up. I'm, I'm interested in making it easier for people to you know, collaborate with computers to carry out tasks by modeling the context and the people um, in the interactions and hope to have chances to collaborate with folks and talk with folks here at SES. Thank you.